put this lovely top on to film this video and I've already got spit up on me so great start. Hi guys, it's Bryony, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another push chair review, this time on the Bugaboo Ant. First I wanna say thank you so much to those of you who have been uh, giving me great feedback from my reviews. I know I've been doing these new ones recently and I've been getting some great uh, feedback from them and I'm really enjoying doing these push chair reviews. So if, I know it's not my normal style, but bear with me <laughs> for those of you that are enjoying them uh, and hopefully they are helpful to those of you who are looking to purchase a push chair. So I'm gonna get straight into today's video because I've got a lot of things to cover and this is probably gonna get quite long anyway as it is. So the Bugaboo Ant is an ultra compact travel push chair and that's important to take into account before we start this video this is designed to be a small push chair that works well in an urban environment but isn't going to cover um, or be able to handle multi-terrain so for those of you considering this that's something to bear in mind it's very important that you get the push chair that's right for your environment where you live and what you're going to be using it for so i've made a list of all the pros and cons that i've found with this push chair having used it now for a number of months um, and just a heads up beforehand i purchased this push chair second hand back in september last year i paid 275 pounds for it and that was also including a little um newborn uh bugaboo cocoon that they sold that the lady who sold it to me gave me with it and she had also purchased the carry strap for it as well so there are a couple of accessories this came with that are not normally come with it as standard but which came with it when i bought it second hand the first thing i really like about this push chair is it is really compact and i don't just mean when it's folded up it is really compact too it looks like a little suitcase but even when it's unfolded it's um it is a really small nimble looking push chair and i get so many compliments on this push chair i have to be said because it's just people look at it and go wow that's so great it's so little particularly if you live in an urban environment like i do where you've got little shops and little cafes the way that this just sort of tucks into little corners is brilliant and in fact you don't even need to put it down you can just sort of do this little trick with the handlebar where you push it in and rock it down and then it will tuck away out the way really um, handily, but it, I, it's so brilliant from that perspective. I do love how compact it is. Another thing that I really like about this pushchair, and one of the main selling features of it to me personally, was that it can parent and world face with the same seat unit attached. Now, a lot of, there are some travel strollers out there in the same sort of price bracket as this that will go from newborn, but you have to buy a newborn kit, uh, extension kit to add to it. Um, and that's a bit of a problem, well that's fine, but it's a problem for example if you had say two children who are quite young, um, let's say you've got a baby and a toddler or like a two, three-ish year old, I'd probably say under three, um, and they're able to walk and maybe they go on the buggy board which you can attach on the back as well and you push it along but they get really tired and you think actually I could put the baby in a carrier and they could go in the push chair. With the Bugaboo Ant you can do that because you can use the same seat unit, you literally just fold it up and flip it round and it can forward face or you keep the rear facing, you probably want to put them forward facing so they have a rest, a foot rest for their feet. And you can do that with the Bugaboo Ant whereas with another push chair say like the baby's on yo-yo, you can't just quickly convert the seat to forward facing. Once it's in its newborn setting, that's it. So you haven't got to push chair for an older one then, it is only going to be used for the newborn. Not an issue for everybody, but something to bear in mind and I did really like that it had that ability to switch between the two. Another thing I really like about this push chair is it has a really handy pocket on the back of the push chair which you can use whether the push chair is up or down, you don't have to empty it. Which is great because you can put things like nappies or a bottle or a toy or a blanket in there and even when it's folded down you can still access it so if it's for example this pusher is so compact it will fit in an overhead locker on a plane some airlines will make you check it in anyway do bear that in mind but if you do have it in the overhead locker you can just reach in and grab things out of it which i think is really great that you have to kind of by hooking everything out of the push chair when you fold it down, anything in this pocket can stay there, which I think is really good. Kind of leading on from the pocket, the other thing I like is this push chair has really good storage for a compact push chair. Yes, it's not huge, but it's a compact push chair. You can fit a surprising amount underneath the front of the seat, and it has this little flap that comes up if you want to kind of contain things a bit better, although I have to say I personally never use it. You can stuff coats, bit of shopping, I've even stuffed a nappy bag under there before. You'd be amazed how much stuff will fit underneath this push chair. It actually is really good so that's a really good feature of it too. I've already covered that I think it looks really great. It's, as I said, I've had so many push chairs before because I'm a foster carer and I've done nanny and I've had numerous push chairs over the years. I've tried a lot. I've never been complimented on the push chair as much as I have this one. People just think it's fantastic how small and agile it is and the fact that it just tucks away everywhere. So I always get compliments on this and it's it's really nice. And I have to, I've said before, when I kind of 
push into um, shops and I tuck it out the way and I see all these other mums trying to like manhandle their push chairs around the, the tables, I do feel quite smug at that point, I'm not gonna lie. It has three different handlebar positions, which actually for a compact travel push chair is quite rare. A lot of them have a set handlebar height and you can't adjust it. This one you can, and it has quite a tall, um, long handlebar height, which I think a six foot person could quite happily push. Um, but also has an, another adjuster, has three handlebar heights, so that's the tallest. The next one down is one that I use, and I'm five foot two, and that's quite comfortable for me. And then there's also a, a third one, which you kind of, if you click it in, push down and click it in on either side, there is another position which is very low, which is the perfect sort of height if you are a parent that's really petite. I have seen a parent with dwarfism use this pushchair in this position, but also if you're a wheelchair user, for example, because the seat on the pushchair is quite low, you can easily see over the top and it is it, you are able to use it one-handed as well, so that's something to bear in mind too. As we talked about before, it's so compact, it will fit in literally any car. I never ever worry about this fitting somewhere. If I'm out and about or on a trip, it, you're, you're gonna fit it in. It's so compact, it's great. The harness is actually really good on this pushchair too. Bugaboo have got this new five point harness which you basically can clip all the straps in individually so you haven't got to like clip two together and then put them in and wiggle their arm through. Um, I tend to just grab the top two straps to kind of put them in and keep them fixed in so they can't wriggle out and then do the side straps and then you press the middle button they're all released instantly. Very easy to use very good harness. Uh, surprisingly, this pusher has a really nice push to it. Bugaboo do tend to use really good wheels on all their push chairs. Um, it's got no suspension, so it's not gonna handle bumps very well, but actually I find that I can use this push chair really easily. On smooth surface, it's lovely to push, absolutely lovely, but it will handle a little bit of rough terrain. It'll go over flat grass, that's it though. It won't handle anything rougher than that. Um, but actually I can push it one hand, which is really good, even though it has the height adjuster in the middle, which you squeeze to move the handlebar up and down, can still use it comfortably one handed, which is really good. The Bugaboo Ant has a number of accessories that you can add to it too. One of them is a leg rest. So even though you can see that the, uh, there is no leg rest on the pusher itself, and a lot of parents worry that their children's legs will dangle off once they start getting a bit bigger, you can purchase a leg rest addition additionally, and it will also fold up with the pusher as well. And I think that's probably the only accessory that I will end up purchasing for this one, I've got a bigger child in it because, um, yeah, I've, I've, their legs are kind of, the one I've got at the moment, legs are kind of hanging off at the moment, but they're not uncomfortable and I don't see the need to purchase it just yet, but it's probably something I will consider doing and it's great that I have that option. So moving on to the cons of this pushchair, well the first one for me I'd have to say is that the pushchair does not lie flat in the forward facing position. Now I haven't actually really used it in its forward facing position much, but I do think that's a bit of a con to it. In its rear facing position, when it's parent facing, it will go completely flat, which is brilliant because you can have a newborn in it from, like right from the get go. Um, and I did do some traveling in September last year. We, we obviously we had to stay here because of COVID, but we went on a, a holiday within the UK and we drove up there. And at the time I didn't have a compact pushchair. I had to use the, the chassis of my pushchair, but leave the seat unit and just take the car seat that fitted onto it. And that's what we had to use if we needed the pushchair. But actually if I'd had this, it would have been so much better. And we're about to go on holiday in a couple of weeks actually. And I'm definitely gonna be taking the buggy with me. For that um but it would have it, the thing i love about it is it can go flat for children under six months don't need an additional kit but it doesn't rear face in the full face position in fact it's quite it's still quite an upright position in its reclined one so i do wish bugaboo would add an extra reclined position even if it's not completely flat just so that if you have a little one that falls asleep when they're sitting forward you can still put the seat back a bit <laughs> The other, and this for me I think is the, the biggest con I have with it, the handlebar is made of this plastic material to keep it lightweight, which I understand, but it feels horrible. Um, in fact, it almost hurts when you're pushing in the summer for after a long period of time when you've got sweaty hands, because it just it's just not nice to hold on to at all, and I really think Bugaboo, this is Bugaboo, they should have added a little bit of foam or some leatherette or something on there. Wouldn't have added much weight, but would have made the push so much nicer for the hold on the handle. Not such an issue in winter when you've got gloves on, but in the summer, yeah, no, that handlebar is horrible. And continuing on from the handlebar point, uh, the actual handlebar itself is quite flimsy feeling. It has a lot of give in it. Now that's because it has a, like a tripod, you know, it goes in and out like that. Um, and so that in its 
the way it works has some weakness in it and it is an ultra compact pushchair like we said before so it is going to have some compromise somewhere this is where the compromise is on this pushchair is the fact that that um handlebar is a little bit flimsy have to say though when i've got a little one in it and i'm pushing it i really don't notice it it's only when you're going up and down curves that's when i tend to notice the give the most but generally speaking doesn't affect the use the other main cons of this pushchair which you do really need to consider is the seat unit is pretty small i honestly don't think you're going to be having a child in the seat unit beyond sort of two and a half maybe up to three if you've got a smaller child um you do have to pull the seat unit right up and it will you know there's different height positions of the, the seat rest at the back you can pull it all the way up to its tallest but i do think bugaboo should try and make it a bit bigger so it gets more use out of it uh because yeah that seat unit is pretty darn small that being said however one of the reasons it's so small is that the hood is attached to the top of it and i think if bugaboo found a way so the hood could kind of slide up which would give more room between the top of the pushchair and the hood then you know you can't the seat unit is probably the same sort of length as like a baby's and yo-yo but because of that hood being attached to the top it, it can't slide up and down it's currently zipped on um, so you can't unzip it and take it off if you really needed to and then you would comfortably get an old child nip but then they've got no sun protection um although that being said the hood when it's on the push and you've got a smaller child in it is really good it has a pretty good coverage i've never had a problem with the sun getting in their eyes or anything so that's another positive but yeah the seat unit is small now the downside to it major downside if you live in the uk doesn't come with its rain cover. This is a pretty expensive pushchair and I feel it really should for that price that it costs come with its rain cover, uh, but you have to purchase it as, as an additional thing and I personally don't feel that any pushchair that's sold in the United Kingdom should ever be sold without its rain cover. Even though this is a travel pushchair, it can still rain on holiday, it should come with its rain cover. And finally, the main con to this pushchair is it's a travel pushchair, but it's really expensive. At full price, with the seat fabric and everything on, because there's a lot of adaptability with this, you can kind of choose the seat fabrics and the hood color that you want and everything. So you can customize it and the chassis and that. But at full price, it's around the 450 mark. That is not cheap. You can get a lot of travel push chairs for a lot less than that. And again, why I'm so peeved they don't give you the rain cover with it. That to me, I think is a really poor show. So main question, would I recommend the Bugaboo Ant? Well, it depends on your circumstances. As a travel push chair, definitely not way too expensive for the price isn't going to last you for older children you're much better off just getting a cheaper compact pusher that just forward faces and maybe reclines back flat if that's all you want it for is for travel where i think the bugaboo ant really has its value and it actually i think should be adjusted a bit more for this environment is that the fact that it goes from birth without a newborn kit needing to be purchased i think is its real selling point and as a compact city push chair ultra compact city push chair i think that's where it's really brilliant i love that it it will just tuck literally in the hallway out the way no problem at all you've got no space for a push chair you will find space for this one it will tuck away i love that you can add the the little cocoon to it and that makes it newborn compatible and it still looks really cozy in the winter when i've pushed little ones in it really great for throwing in the car and when you're traveling either within the uk and again it fits in an overhead lock on a plane when you're traveling abroad and even though it is fiddly to put up and down that personally has never been a con to me because because once you figure out how to do it, I can do it in 10 seconds. It doesn't take me that long to actually get it up and down. And also, when I'm putting a little one in out, as I think I said before in this video, I've filmed this twice, I can't remember what I've said in this one. <laughs> um, I always put my little one either in their car seat or in a high chair or they're somewhere else. So actually, I don't need the push chair to go up and down with one hand. So yes, I think if you're somebody that really wants a really small push chair because you haven't got much space, you accept that, you know, the compromise for that is going to be that you're going to need to buy another push chair, maybe a cheaper one down the line when they get a bit older and also you might want more space as well for, for storage and stuff. So you might get a cheap umbrella stroller, which you can get for under £100 now but you want it so that it has that functionality where when they're little you can have them lying flat but maybe when they wake up and they start getting bigger and you want to keep them parent facing longer you can still sit them up which a lot of pushers won't do and then you can choose to put them forward facing a bit later so not having to just have them for parent facing when they're newborn then i think this is a really good push chair that you should consider the quality of the fabrics and as i said the harness and everything it is really good so it is just a compact mini main push chair that you have to accept because they've made it lightweight for a reason it's easy to lift it out and up and down stairs so if you live in flats it's also good to consider that too that there are going to be some compromises somewhere in the structure and that happens to be in the handlebar and again like i said the handlebar it does feel kind of 
nasty to hold on to. I don't like the feel of it. Some people it doesn't bother them, but you could also just go on Etsy and buy some like leather covers for it. So if that was a problem, that's something you can get around. Although I do think Bugaboo should fix that. So that's who I think the Bugaboo Ant is really suitable for, but I wouldn't say it's suitable for a travel push jar. I think it'd be much better off getting something cheaper to be perfectly honest. For everyday use though, in a city environment, I absolutely love it. I really do. It is just so stylish and it is really unique looking and so tiny and just it goes goes out the way with no problem at all that I do have to say for that environment I would recommend it as long as you can obviously afford the price. Also because the Bugaboo Ant hasn't sold particularly well in a number of places I have seen it heavily discounted brand new on a number of sites. I can't really tell you what there is now because when as and when you watch this video there'll be you know different places that it's available and different prices but you can certainly get it for less than the full 450. I think the cheapest I've seen it at the time I filmed this was 350 for the whole set. Um, so just basically consider whether or not that's in your price range. Maybe look at what getting them second hand. I have seen a couple on like Facebook Marketplace and places like that that you can get um, if that's something you're interested in. But yeah, I didn't clean this push by the way before I filmed it because I wanted to see just like it is quite grubby because it is used so much. So yes, it has its cons. It has its pros as well. Do you think it works for you? that's up to you to decide. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you found it helpful. Um, if there are any other things you want me to point out with the push chair, do let me know in the comments below. And if there are any other push chairs you want me to review, let me know as well. I was quite keen to review the Bugaboo Lynx, which is a new push chair that they've released. Um, but Bugaboo um, got back to me and said that they weren't currently looking for any other influencers, so they're not willing to send me one. So unfortunately I can't review that, but uh, you know, <laughs> if you want me to review it, leave it down below and you know, never know. If, if a lot of people want it, maybe Bugaboo will change their mind, never know. Um, but if there are any other pushchair brands and pushchairs that you want me to review, do let me know. Um, I'm always happy to try them out. I love pushchairs. I love trying them out. It's a bit of a hobby of mine. And I'm a foster carer, so I have a constant stream of children that need a pushchair at some point. So it works out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Do please subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye, everyone. Hope you have a great day.